In this video I'm going to make a start on the cylinder block, the steam chest and cover plate. This is a chunk of cast iron I'm going to use to make the cylinders for the 5 inch gauge line. It's just been sawn from a round bar, so none of the sides are parallel or square. So I've just finished facing off one side, so I now want to face off another side square with that, and I'm going to use the, the vice jaw as my reference for the square. So to Press this evenly against the back jaw to keep it square. I've turned up a piece of aluminium. Uh, it's an aluminium disc flat one side and it's domed on the other. I'm going to place that in the centre of this jaw. Tighten that up. Now I can only take light cuts, which is all I need to do anyway. So that should give me a, a square reference, it's reasonably square, we'll machine it and we'll check it once it's machined to see how, how close we are. Plate. And I know the square is very precise. So it's looking pretty good. Just shine the light through the back. Probably can't see it on camera, but there is a slight but a light coming through at the top. But it's very slight. They're talking a tenth of a third or something like that. Okay, so the footage you've just seen was me squaring up the block. Uh, that was done quite a while ago. What I'm not showing in this video is surface grinding the two ends and drilling tapping these holes. These holes are so that it bolts to the frames in the engine. I might have shown this in another video, I can't quite remember. But anyway, we're going to bash on and put the, uh, the bores in for the pistons. So it's within point one. So 
So that's within 0.01 of a millimetre. So we'll just check longitudinally. That's within 01, so that's uh, okay. That's three tenths of a thou. So because we're drilling cast iron, this drill is being ground with a zero rake along the cutting edge. So that's normal practice for cast iron and brass. So when I come to bore this out with the boring tool, we're actually going to hit uh, this chug jaws will come through the other side. So I should have really realised that, but never mind. So we're going to have to pull this jaw back a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pull out a small portion of this just to get a reference so that when I move this jaw I can indicate it back in if it moves too much. So anyway. We'll just give that a bit of a bore there, a bit of a clean up. Okay, so we'll back this jaw off. Yeah, I think I better pack him. Tighten it up. That's within less than a thumb. That's 28, so two to come off, that's a one millimetre cut on diameter. So they should leave about 0.4 millimetres to come off. Fit. And it's nice and parallel all the way through. So the plug gauge is um, 0.45 millimeters under size. So it gives us a little bit of allowance uh, <coughs> to, to hone it or lap it. But we can make the pistons to suit anyway so it doesn't have to be exact. I just need to face this across a few thou.
Right, so I've gone ahead and done the hole on the other side. So let's just see how well that matched up. So that is 10.5354. Hang on a second. 10.45 well, 10.46 That's pretty good So that's uh, 5.61 Turn it round 5.6 That's pretty good Can't kind of argue with that To finish off the boards I think I'll probably make a lap and just uh, lap it to size and get it nice and smooth I haven't decided whether to use PTFE rings or cast iron rings if it's PDFE rings, this needs to be like a mirror finish. If it's cast iron rings, it needs to be more like a horn finish. So while I'm thinking about what I'm going to do with regards uh, the piston rings and finishing off these cylinder bores, I think we'll make a start on the, uh, the cylinder cover and the space that goes between the cylinder and the cylinder cover. So this is my first go at using a shear tool on the shaver. So I'm taking about three or four thousand cut. Put a bit of cutting oil on. That's absolutely fantastic. You can see the machining marks but you can barely feel them. It's almost as good as a ground finish. So that's the finish with the ordinary shaping tool. Which I could probably do better to be honest. However that's the finish with the shear tool. Now it probably doesn't come out on camera as good as what it actually is but that is dead smooth. If 
Thanks for watching. See you next time.